Now carrying on with the lesson on capillaries, we want to notice the different types of capillary. And basically there's only three types. There's the continuous capillary or the continuous type of capillaries, the fenestrated capillaries and the sinusoids. So first let's think about the uh, continuous capillaries first of all. Now the capillaries are forming these microscopic tubules. So here's a microscopic tubule and we notice it's formed by two endothelial cells. These vascular endothelial cells. And these are cells, they've got a nucleus. Cytoplasm. Cell membrane around the outside. The nucleus. They're vascular endothelial cells. And like many cells, they're surrounded by a basement membrane. So these cells sit on a basement membrane. Fine, thin layer, very fine, very thin layer of connective tissue, the basement membrane. And of course, the gap in the middle here is the lumen. And the blood cells will pass in and out of the plane of this picture through the lumen. So these cells are vascular endothelial cells. They are vascular cells. And we notice that the small gaps here between the two cells. Now these are often very fine gaps and these are called the intercellular clefts. So this is the intercellular cleft. And likewise around the top here, the intercellular cleft. These are small gaps and these are important as one of the mechanisms whereby material goes in and out of the capillary. So these sort of continuous capillaries, there's a continuous wall. So if we look at this from the inside, we look, look at the individual um, cells making this up. We would see that these are the individual endothelial cells as might be viewed from the inside of a capillary with their nucleus. These would be the intercellular clefts here between the cells, intercellular clefts there. And also we notice these cells are uh, flat in shape, that's called squamous. They're not columnar, they're not cuboidal, they're squamous vascular endothelial cells. So we've mentioned lungs, muscles, skeletal muscles and uh, smooth muscle will all have these sort of continuous capillaries. They're found in connective tissue and they're also found in the brain. But in the brain it's particularly interesting because um, this was a capillary in the brain like this. The cells are pretty well touching. Well, they are touching. They're called tight junctions. So if that was a capillary in the brain, there's a tight junction there. And this greatly limits what can go in and out of the, well, between the blood and the tissues in the brain. Because of course, outside here, we're going to have the tissue cells, brain cells, for example. I know they're not that shape. But this, these tight junctions form what's called the blood-brain barrier. So 
So the blood-brain barrier is, is formed by the tight nature of the junction between the individual vascular endothelial cells. So in most tissues there's going to be a small gap, whereas in the brain it's a tight junction. And that's important because we don't want toxins and nasty things going into to poison the brain because the brain is obviously quite essential. So that's the continuous sort of capillary. Now the next sort I want to talk about are the, uh, the fenestrated type. Now if we start off with the sort of view you might get from inside the capillary with the fenestrated ones. Initially it looks much the same as the uh, continuous type of capillary with the intercellular clefts here. So they've still got these intercellular clefts, the small gaps. But fenestration is a word that actually means window. So the small gaps here. You can normally only see these with an electron microscope, but with an electron microscope, they're very clear. These small fenestrations. So if we were to look at this from the side, here's a, here's a capillary again with a endothelial cells and the uh, nucleus, the intercellular clefts. And again, surrounding it, we have the basement membrane. That's the same. The cell sitting on the basement membrane. But what we have through these is, is holes through the cytoplasm. So these holes here, the fenestrations. Actually, I'm just going to darken these holes in like that so they're fairly obvious. So these are actually holes through the cytoplasm and membrane of the cell. These are the fenestrations. And these are important to... Um, it increases the permeability. I mean, obviously, if there's holes, it's this increased permeability of the capillary. So we get more rapid molecular exchange. And we can also let larger molecules through. I mean, these, these fenestrations are, say, 70 to about 100 um, nanometers. Nanometers. So like 100 nanometers, that equals 0 0.1 of a micrometer. So they're on a very small scale. Um, a micrometer is a thousandth of a millimetre and a nanometer is a thousandth of a micrometer. So you can see the kind of scale these are on. They're, they're on a very, very small scale. But the increased permeability and they're used in tissues where there's a lot of molecular exchange, where a lot of material is going back or forth into and out of the capillary. So the kidneys, for example, um, the choroid plexus, where the cerebrospinal fluid is formed, the uh, villi, where we've got a large bulk of molecules uh, to absorb from um, the products of digestion, or endocrine glands, where we want increased permeability, allowing larger molecules and indeed allowing a larger flow of molecules between the blood and the surrounding tissue fluid. Because always remember that here we have the tissues. These are the tissues of the body. Not drawn to scale, but these are the tissue, the cells surrounding the capillaries. So the fenestrations will allow more material to go from the cells into the tissue fluid, from the tissue fluid into the blood, and from the blood into the tissue fluid and into the cells. Greater bulk of um, exchange. Now the third type of the uh, sinus, just make sure again, again these are mixed up. So this is the, um, these are the fenestrated ones here. A bit of the page is about the fenestrated capillaries. This bit is about the continuous capillaries. Over here. Yeah, yeah, the continuous. 
and the sinusoids are the other type. Now the sinusoids have um, large fenestrations and large intercellular clefts. So if, again, if we're looking from inside out at this, we'd see the cells here, but we'd see very large gaps. So the intercellular cleft here is very large, large intercellular cleft. And also within the cells themselves, we'd see, there's nucleus, of course, but the, within the cells themselves, we'd see large, what are essentially large fenestrations. Sometimes these are called uh, discontinuous capillaries because it's almost as if the wall is discontinuous. And if we looked at it from the side, we would see that uh, there's large gaps in the, in the cellular structure. So large gaps in the cells. Large intercellular clefts here. And as well as we've said, large sinusoidal fenestrations. So I think you can see here, there's a lot of space for material to get into and out of the cell through the large intercellular clefts and uh, also through the very large fenestrations. And the basement membrane in these tends to be incomplete as well. So these are designed to allow um, large exchange of material. So larger structures such as proteins can get in and out and even uh, red blood cells can get in and out some of these. For example, you get these in a red bone marrow. So the newly formed red blood cells can actually squeeze out of here to get from the red bone marrow into the circulation, the new erythrocytes. The place that's famous for this sort of capillary, of course, is the liver where we need a large bulk of material going from the liver sinusoids, the liver capillaries, to the liver cells where the, process, the material can be processed and then returned to the blood. So red bone marrow and liver are the main sites for these. There's also some in the anterior pituitary and uh, parathyroid gland. So large bulk of material getting in and out. Also in the liver, of course, that allows a lot of tissue fluid to form. So the liver produces a lot of, a lot of lymphatic fluid. So this one is the sinusoids. So capillary is basically only three types, determined by the requirements of the tissue. So we have the continuous, these are continuous are by far the most common type, of course. Um, lungs, muscles, brain, connective tissues. The fenestrated capillaries, kidneys, choroplexus, villi, endocrine glands, where we need more material to be exchanged more quickly and larger molecular size of material. And then when we need positively huge amounts of material to go back and forward between the blood and the tissue, here will be the tissue spaces here, this is the tissue cells. When we need very large amounts of material, we have the sinusoidal capillaries, such as the liver and the red bone marrow. So the Capillaries are specific to the, to the requirements of the tissue. The capillaries are there to serve the tissue, but always bringing in the oxygen, bringing in the nutrients, bringing in the th things that need the biochemical processing and the hepatocytes, removing the waste products, removing the carbon dioxide, removing the excess nitrogen, and uh, facilitating the microcirculation.